Oh yeah, you breathe them in the longer they have to affect the body. We are hearing a new warning tonight about the risk of e-cigarettes. A hospital in Wisconsin says it is treating eight teenagers for injuries to their lungs, and doctors suspect their problems are tied to vaping. According to the Centers for Disease Control, one in five high school students and one in 20 middle school students have reported vaping. The CDC says most e-cigarettes contain nicotine and other chemicals. And the long-term effects are still being studied. 10 News reporter Stephanie Haynes spoke to medical professionals in East Tennessee. And Stephanie, they share those concerns about vaping. Yeah, Robin and John, medical workers here say many people think they are just inhaling vapor, but you are taking in nicotine and other chemicals, and it can cause damage or injury to your lungs, and that can be a lifelong challenge. We're here today to warn you about what we believe is a significant health issue related to the danger of vaping in teenagers. Top doctors at the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin delivered a serious message after it reports eight teens have been hospitalized with serious lung injuries. The common link, they say, is vaping. The popularity of vaping is obviously skyrocketing among our kids and its dangers are still relatively unknown. According to the CDC, one in five high schoolers reported vaping and one in 20 middle schoolers. The CDC says vaping includes the use of e-cigarettes, including brands like Juul, and most contain nicotine and other chemicals that can be harmful. Medical professionals in East Tennessee say it's a dangerous trend, especially for children. You breathe it in, you're breathing in aerosolized chemicals that get deep into the lungs. One of the most Dangerous chemicals is a chemical called Dicetel, which has been known to uh, cause popcorn lung. He says exposure at a young age can mean problems later in life. So the earlier you breathe them in, the longer they have to affect the body. In Washington, lawmakers held the leaders at Juul accountable for the use among young people. We are dedicated to, to learning from our mistakes and not repeating them. Back in Wisconsin, medical leaders say they have a message for parents and teens. If you uh, know your kids or suspect your kids are vaping, have a conversation with them. Talk to your, uh, your health provider about um, how you can discuss that. And also warn them about the potential dangers of vaping. The CDC says e-cigarettes expose users to fewer harmful chemical chemicals than regular cigarettes. But it says the use of any tobacco product, including e-cigarettes, is unsafe for young people. Robin and John. Stephanie Haynes on the story. Thank you. Let's turn to your forecast now. We are seeing yet another mild night all across East Tennessee. This is a live look from Market Square. Temperatures, though, going to be warming up a bit tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Todd Howe joins us from the Weather Center. And, Todd, we're going to see this slow up creep in those temperatures over the next few days. Yeah, a little warmer the next few days, a little bit more humidity, but still not too bad, a little bit below low average still for this time of year late July. We'll talk more about that specific forecast for your Friday coming right up. First of all, what a gorgeous sunset tonight posted on Facebook by Mary Ann Gilfillan in Fairfield Glade. Thank you, Mary Ann. That is beautiful indeed up in Cumberland County. Nice sunset after another beautiful day. Here is your specific 12 hour forecast we will drop slowly from midnight tonight through the 60s into tomorrow morning. We'll start out around 62 degrees at 7 a.m. and the uh, value showed here 63 at 6 a.m. 81 at noontime warming up to about 86 later in the day. But the, over the next 12 hours, 60s to near 80. It's going to be another nice, comfortable start. Beautiful, clear skies right now. And again, Market Square, pretty nice in downtown Knoxville. Live view from Alcoa Highway where we've got clear skies, 71 comfortable degrees in Knoxville. We'll talk about that uh, little bit of a warm up with a little bit more humidity over the next few days. Coming right up, John. Rock. All right, Todd, thanks very much. Well, tonight we now know Steve West will be executed by lethal injection next month. The State Department of Corrections says West declined choosing lethal injection or the electric chair, making the default lethal injection. West and co-defendant Ronnie Martin were convicted of murdering a mother and her teenage daughter, Wanda and Sheila Romines, back in 1987. Martin received life in prison because he was 17 years old at the time and pleaded guilty. Relative Eddie Campbell says he is ready for closure, but feels for the other family. I feel sorry for the, uh, the West family. I, I really do because they're going to lose a loved one and they're just going to start what we've been going through for 33 years. Juan and Sheila, they're not forgotten. The state plans to execute West on August 15th at Riverbend Maximum Security Institution in Nashville.
Tonight, mayoral candidates tackle top issues facing communities across Knoxville. All six candidates gathered at a forum at Mount Calvary Baptist Church in East Knoxville. Candidates spoke about gun violence, opportunities for young people, and cutting utility costs. We asked each candidate to give us one way to reduce gun violence in Knoxville. Encouraging gun owners who are responsible to keep their guns in a responsible manner. I was taught this is what it does, this is the repercussions, this is why we don't do this. And I think that's an important thing. Spending time with, with the young people and teaching them, uh, teaching them about conflict resolution. Putting our police officers in the precinct, in the community, where they actually become familiar with the community. Embrace the youth. And we can do that through uh, not only education, but job opportunities, economic opportunities. Make sure people have opportunity. And if they've got the training, uh, they, can, uh, they can get a good job, provide for themselves, and they can see a future. Always with an intentional focus on the mayoral election is August 27th. The regular election is set for November 5th. A Tennessee congressman pushed for safer school buses on Capitol Hill today. During a hearing, Congressman Steve Cohen of Memphis talked about the 2016 Chattanooga school bus crash that killed six students. The congressman proposed the School Bus Safety Act. It would require using safety recommendations from the National Transportation Safety Board. Now that means all new buses would have three-point seat belts, automatic emergency braking technology, and fire suppression systems. There's no more precious cargo than our children and our school children whenever there's an accident. I've been trying to do this since I was a state senator. I know it's difficult to get beyond the industries, but it's something we need to do. The NTSB says between 2008 and 2017, more than 1,200 people died in school vehicle-related crashes. Tennessee's tax-free weekend begins at midnight for back-to-school items, but only items under $100 make that cup. So for the students who need graphing calculators like the TI-84, some parents will have to break the bank. But do you really need one of those calculators? 10 News reporter Grace King found out how essentially and how essential they are to the classroom and if there is a way around them. Grace? Robin and John, Tanya Coates is the president of the Knox County Education Association. She says cell phones can sometimes be a good substitute and it could save you hundreds of dollars and students agree. It's on many school supply lists this year. Algebra 2, bridge math. A TI-84 graphing calculator. A quick search online shows it's around $150. Even on sale, it's still above the $100 tax-free cutoff. Well, I, I couldn't afford one because they were kind of expensive, so um, I borrowed one from a friend. Tanya Coates is the president of the Knox County Education Association. She says cell phones can sometimes be a good substitute. High school senior Sophia Lamb agrees. I've never bought a calculator before, so because my parents won't spend that much. Instead, her Knox County math class provided one for her. They usually have a couple. They don't usually have some for the whole class, but they usually have a good, like, 15-ish that, you know, the other kids get to use. At home, she downloads apps on her cell phone. I mean, they're not as good as actual calculators, I'll tell you that much, but, uh, I mean, they get the job done, I guess, with most problems. Getting the job done and saving her money. Well, everybody has phones these days usually so I mean instead of you know spending $140 on a calculator which I definitely wouldn't do with my money you know what I mean I definitely get other things and some companies allow you to rent calculators for the school year it's also a good idea to buy used you can find them at a discounted price on Amazon and eBay there are options thank you Grace Tonight, Anderson County leaders unveiled their plans for a new animal shelter. That new facility will be more than 10,000 square feet, along with room for kennels and staff. The new shelter will also have space for education, adoption, and volunteer projects. The county now plans to create a committee to raise more money for the building. Interns with the city of Knoxville collected donations in money and time to help the hungry today. 20 interns used a social media campaign to fight hunger in Knoxville. Anyone who posted using the hashtag feed Knox pledged their money or time to a local nonprofit that helps the hungry. The interns gained 57,000 total online impressions and organizers hope the interns use what they learned in the future. 
We want to create a culture of, of the next generation that doesn't make excuses and doesn't worry about placing blame, but focuses on solutions. You see people that don't have as much as you have and actually like have the opportunity to give back to them and help them out, it's a, it's a great feeling. It's a blessing, honestly. The idea for the campaign came from the city's civil service department.